I'm just gonna do it before they concede. Double. Double. Alright, what is up my friends? Welcome to not another video here on CoolStuffInc.com. We're kind of a transitionary period where Bloomborough hasn't come out yet, Nadu hasn't been banned yet, so most of the constructed formats right now are kind of uh, kind of dead on arrival while waiting for Bloomborough to come out and then Nadu banned. So we're playing some Arena Cube Draft, uh, and those who don't know what Cube is, uh, one of the best ways to play Magic, honestly, it is a collection of... Yeah, between 360 and maybe 540 cards, uh, and you just shuffle it up and draft it. So, of course, in paper, you can have a cube with your friends, uh, but this is the online Magic the Gathering Arena Cube, and it's a little bit different than uh, a lot of paper cubes, which have a lot of older cards, the Vintage Cube, Magic on and so on and so forth. So, I'm here to show you today how to draft the Magic Arena Cube. Bravery comes in all sizes with Magic's upcoming Bloomborough set, a world full of tiny tales and big adventure. All Bloomborough pre-orders at CoolStuffInc.com, including singles, sealed products, commander decks, and bundles, come with a free exclusive Jim Davis Karnstruck token. Put your best paw forward and order now at CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, let's do this. We got eight players, just like a regular draft, playing three packs, just like a regular draft. Uh, but unlike a regular draft, there are a ton of insane mythics and ever and everything else. So this is obviously not normal booster packs. This is the collection of the cube, and we got a very powerful pack here. Now, important things about cube. Uh, one thing about the the Magic Arena cube is it does not have a lot of the older cards. You know, there are no wastelands, ancestral recalls. Uh, you know, uh, re actually, reanimates is on there, but uh, you know, uh, so it is a little bit lower power level uh, than uh, you know a vintage cube or one of some of the older, more paper level cubes, uh, but still very powerful. And one of the biggest things about a cube draft is you try, you're trying to build a deck, not just a collection of cards. You want to take all the red and black cards. You can make a red, red and black deck. You want to build a deck. It has a theme. Maybe you're an aggressive deck or a prowess deck or a control deck. You can even be a combo deck or certain kind of things like that too. So being aware of that and looking at this pack, we see uh, Flage is an unbelievably powerful card. Uh, it's a two-color card, which is a little annoying, but really, really strong card. Uh, we got Thoughtseize here, which is an excellent one. Important to note, this is obviously Singleton. So if you want disruption in your deck, if you want a counterspell, you know, you got counterspell proper or thought seize, uh, there only are so many of them, and the best ones are the best ones. This is the only thought seize in the cube. It is the best discard spell. So I think thinking thought seize here first would be totally reasonable. I think flage is also quite good. Uh, and I think that's mostly it. Also, um, lands are very important too, which we'll see as we're going through this draft, where you really want to be able to cast your spells. And uh, of course, the lands help you do that. Uh, this is not like a regular draft format where you want to play, you know, nine planes and eight mountains. You really want to have as many dual lands as possible. Kind of like constructed deck. Think about your your draft to get constructed deck, not a limited deck. So what does Magda the Horde Master do? Oh, this, this is uh, this is a weird art. This is just to make, make a try and make a treasure, sure. So uh, I've got Captivating Crossroads here, which is a decent land. A little bit of mana fixing. Uh, Bloodbird Elf's kind of fun. I do love me some Bloodbird Elf. Now with Flodge in our deck... We're going to want most of our lands to have for red or white. It's obviously a very committing first pick. Um, there are no red or white dual lands here. I, mean, I do love Blood Braid Elf. Also, part of the cube is that, like, it's a chance to take cards that you love. You know, there isn't really, like, an objectively best pick in a cube draft. A lot of it's based on feel and things that you like. Uh, and I do love Blood Braid Elf. That is pretty fun. Uh, Ranger of Yos, Welcoming Vampire, as far as cards on color. Crossroads is pretty sweet. It's just, like, a fixing land that always does your what you want it to do. Um... I kind of want to take Blood Braid Elf here to have a little, little fun, maybe. Maybe we'll do a little Naya stuff. I'm taking Blood Braid Elf. It's fun. I love Blood Braid Elf. Blood Braid of the Flodge is pretty cool. And uh, we'll go from there. See a Clifftop Retreat and a District. We got a Lurus Cackling Observer. We're going to ATBs reveal. Not one cards man. Choose one. All right, so it's kind of like a bat. We got a Philia, which is a pretty good card here. Unfortunately, uh, Blinking uh, Flodge or Blood Braid Elf, not so good. Slick Shot Shelf. Want to be a little more aggressive. We got some lands here, though, and I think that um, I might just take, take, take the Clifftop Retreat here. You know, I think that uh, a good land is better than most failure cards, because one of the things is you are never going to be short playables in a cube draft. Uh, every card's awesome. There is no, you know, li limited filler kind of stuff. So taking lands high is great. There only are, there only are you know, maybe five or six blah, red, white lands in the entire cube, and nothing here is super exciting. We're not going to Companion Lurus. We're not sure if we're that aggressive or not. Philia is great. I think it's a really, really cool card, but... It's mostly replaceable, uh, whereas these lands are not. Take the retreat. Okay, let me get past some well, some some bangers here. 
Uh, we got Atali Primal Conqueror, which is obviously more of a ramp card, huge card. And then, honestly, one of my favorite cards uh, of all time, Chandra Awakened Inferno. Uh, really powerful Planeswalker that can be a, a sweeper effect. It can be a, a way to finish the game, and it can't be countered, and it can just kill things. Uh, I love Chandra. Uh, Chandra's awesome. And, uh, you know, if in theory, our goal here is to be a red-white. You know, probably more of a mid-range deck with Flage. Um, I'm just thinking Chandra. I love Chandra. Chandra's great. And we see here, you know, another discard spell. Uh, Maze of Untold kind of cool for drawing cards and stuff. But yeah, let's take Chandra. The Immolation Sensation. The Immolation Sensation. All right, so we get past a, a Johnny Nakato Pariah, which is a very powerful card in a, in a red-white deck. Uh, even though it's a mono-white card on the front, the backside wants you to have red permanents in play, which is very, very powerful. Uh, a Johnny's great. There's a Rockfall Veil also. Uh, but I think we're, like, not necessarily guaranteed to play with Bloodbird Elf. Uh, Sky Sovereign's also really good. Uh, but one really important thing in regular draft is, uh, whenever you're kind of close between two cards, always take the cheaper card. That is ten times more important in a cube draft. There are so many four, five, and six mana bombs in a cube. Uh, but there are only so many really good one and two drops. So, typically you almost always want to take the cheaper card if possible. And a Johnny's going to get right into the pile here. And as we build our kind of Boros... Mid range, maybe uh, mid, maybe Naya uh, deck, and kind of go from there. One important thing is that there aren't as many like broken things happening uh, in the Magic Online Cube. Uh, you know, there's no sneak attack, there's no uh, there's storm, there's no you know um, through the breach Emrakul kind of stuff that happens in a vintage cube or powerful cubes. So the games are a little more mid rangey, and therefore being a mid range deck is a little more powerful too. So we see Arab Mesa here, uh, Slam Dunk. Uh, it's a fetch slam. So Fetch lands are perhaps some of the best lands in the entire cube and are extremely high picks. Uh, it's very hard to pass a fetch land even in one of your colors because at any point in the draft, if you get any dual lands, it can fetch those as well or triome. So fetch lands are the best uh, dual lands by far and should be taken almost always uh, unless you're taking an extremely important card for your deck. So seeing a, a six pick fetch land here is phenomenal for us. So take the Mesa and whoa, there you go. All right, another one. Awesome. Marsh flies is great. Uh, we see a Town Racer Tyrant, kind of a cool card. Um, Burn down the house can be cool also, but yeah, pretty easy Marsh Flats here. And this is a black-white fetch land, right? Why well, haven't taken this card? Because this can get any Plains or Swamp. This can get a Sacred Foundry, uh, a Hollow Fountain, a Blood Crypt. Uh, it can get, you know, any dual land in our colors, which is phenomenal. So, slam the Marsh Flats. And we got a, a Grim Lava Mancer, which is a pretty good card, honestly, uh, as far as kind of keeping this under control. Also a Strangle. It's not quite Lightning Bolt, but one of the things in a cube is that there only is one Lightning Bolt. So even though Strangle is worse, uh, it's still, you know, still pretty good. We see a few lands here off of our colors. Uh, one important thing, too, is the Fetch Lands can get these things as well, Shadowy Backstreet. Uh, and so right now, if I were to take this Backstreet, I'd be adding three black sources to my deck because the, the Mesa can get it and the Marsh Flats can get it. So your lands dictate very much what you can do in a cube draft. Uh, this is actually a pretty tempting pick. I'm taking Strangle here. We want to stay alive. And uh, cast our spells and stuff. So, all right. So this is our opening pack. Comes back with all the green and black cards. Not a good sign for us, honestly. Um, okay. Uh, what's our best black or green card here? So there's a double green. You know, Bristly Bill is pretty good. It's with our fetch lands also. It's the fine card. Uh, you landfalls add counters to things. Rookie is cool, but a little a little less impactful. We're not playing black. And then Nicole, there's double green. So I guess we'll take the Bristly Bill. Not sure if we're playing it or not, but one of the important things also about cube is making speculative picks, where your goal is to always try and swing for the fences, you know? Are we going to play this? Maybe not, but if there's some really bad white card, we probably weren't going to play in the back. Uh, just take this card. You know, swing for the fences, you know, plenty of playables. We see here uh, the Paradise Druid comes back. We could end up being Naya with the Paradise Druid to ramp into our stuff as well. Uh, also have a Crossroads, which is a pretty good uh, pretty good land as far as being a fixing land. I'm going to take the, the Paradise Druid, though, again. I think uh, kind of a high upside card, and we get an oh, sweet sweet district. So again, we now have this district, and then the Mesa gets it as well, which is really really cool. Uh, show off ephemerate, cute and all, but love a district here. Looks like we're going into a more solid three colors. We've got a questing beast, which is a little hard to cast alongside Flage, but if our mana is really good, we can. It's, it's, a, it's a good kind of mid rangey threat. Okay, questing beast, green also seems kind of open too. Rockfell Veil, vale, love it. So this is a spot we're taking lands is really really important, right? Hydra, Hydra's okay. Plarg, Plarg's okay. We don't want to end the draft with 30 playables, right? We want to end the draft with 25 playables and a bunch of good lands, and Rockfall Veil is excellent. And again, we want all of our lands tapped for red and white if possible for Flage. Right now, white doesn't seem super open, 
uh, which is fine. You know, make, make, make note of those things as we go on. But our fixing is great. Uh, Galissa and Oko. Uh, we have a black land, so maybe Galissa could be a, a possible card to play. Probably not, but we'll see. Playing a lot of colors is certainly possible in cube if you're able to uh, get a lot of lands, uh, which is usually a good thing to do. Abrupt Decay, sure. All right, so pack two, what do we get? Pack two, we get, I don't even know what this card is. Cerise Slayer of Fear. Five minutes for a 5-5 five, five first strike lifelink. Been in your post-combat main phase if you gain life this turn. Seek a card with the highest amount of value among cards in your library. With amount of value less than or equal to the amount of life that you've gained this turn. That's kind of cool. Uh, just kind of a big Bane Slayer effect. Uh, a Phenomancer, Sunfall, Utopia Sprawl. A Maria Voice of the Conclave is a pretty cool card if you're going wide. I'm uh, not really doing that, though. Ambusher, Swift Spear, Sprawl, Cultivate. Sprawl is great, but requires a forest, which we're not, not, not guaranteed to have. Cultivate's fine. Uh, you know, this kind of ramp effect is pretty powerful. You know, uh, definitely the Arena Cube is a little more based on, like, how good your, you know, your boom booms are. You want to kind of ramp into your big, powerful things and slam Haymaker after Haymaker because there isn't really, like, you know, the combo you set to punish you like there is in other cubes. Um, Nightpack Ambush is kind of whatever. Gilded Goose isn't great. Uh, it's got temporary mana stores. We don't really need the food that well. I'm going to take Cultivate here and not be super thrilled, thrilled about it. Uh, Sprawl is great, but I'm more about, more about our forest count, honestly. So just take the Cultivate and not be super happy about it. Looks like we're getting firmly into like a Naya sort of thing. Um, so when I have good early interaction and then good big things to end the game with. And uh, Blood Barrel is nice. Chandra's nice. Bristly Bill also plays well with the extra land stuff too. So we got a Johnny here. Maybe we'll get a Wild in the Coddle for a little cat action. It'd be kind of fun. All right, we get past the pack with, okay, Banger. Sorts of plushers. So, we see a Mr. Rainforest here. This is an on-color fetch land. Uh, pretty big deal. Uh, Garrick Relentless, also a pretty awesome Planeswalker. Uh, but Swords Plowshares is probably the best removal spell in the entire cube. You know, uh, Swords Plowshares, Lightning Bolt, these Tier 1 spells, Swords, Lightning Bolt, Counterspell, Thoughtseize, there are approximations of these across the cube. For example, because Infernal Grasp, this is obviously worse than, uh, you know, Go for the Throat or whatever, better Fatal Push. Uh, but it's fine, but Swords Plot Shares is the best of the best. And I do love Garrick Relentless in these kind of like mid-range decks. It's an excellent Planeswalker. Uh, and Misty Ray Vars is great too, but Swords is uh, above and beyond. So Slam of Swords, be pretty happy about it. Oh boy. And now we see a lot of stuff. So you see a couple of lands, which is great. Uh, Elegant Parlor being very exciting with all of our fetch lands. Elish Norn's a huge boom boom. Um, we're not really going wild with tokens or anything like that. It is a super powerful card. It does cost 7 mana though. 7 mana is a lot. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, there are plenty of Boom Booms. They were taking the land here. Uh, the, scry the Survey Lines are awesome. And again, we have Fetchables for days, so our mana's going to be really, really good. Hopefully we table the Spite, the Pass, or maybe the Bloodthirsty Adversary. We got super lucky and table the Elish Norn. Awesome, but taking the land here. And you can see here, you might be like, oh my god, Elish Norn's so good. It is good, but there are a lot of five, five, six, and seven mana bombs in the cube, and you can't play six of them. You know, the, there is a, a limited amount, whereas we can play every land you can get. So... Take the parlor. Now we see Path to Exile, which is pretty good. Uh, Prismatic Vista. Stomping Ground. Oh, we see Jetmer's Garden. So there we are. We're in. So Jetmer's Garden is our on color triome. We fetch this thing on turn one. We'll have perfect mana every game, basically. Stomping Ground is great. Uh, but I think specifically, if we're exactly three colors, we want this card more. So we got Stomping Ground here, Prismatic Vista, uh, Elder War, Path to Exile. Because we have the swords, the Path to Exile is not as important. Uh, maybe Table of the Ooze. But yeah, Jetmer's Garden. The shot at your at your own your triumph for your colors is pretty important. So, I wish they would use the uh, the real art though. I don't like these uh, fancy arts. But that's just me. All right, uh, what's up next? We got Cold Steel Heart, Oracle of Moldai is a card that I love. Uh, one of my personal favorite cards. We got the Trailblazer, four five vigilance. Every cast a creature, make a mercenary, and then it taps for uh, for some mana. It's kind of a cool card. Also, Voice of Resurgence, which is a fine two drop. Uh, good against counter spells and stuff too, which is probably good against us. Um, I love Oracle and I love, I mean, Savaz is pretty cool too, but we're going to take, take the cheap card here, I think. Take the, take the voice. Voice is a card that's like, it's not great, uh, but it is good in grindier games and it is good also good against counter spells. And counter spells seem pretty good against us. So we're kind of drafting against our potential opponents here. And, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take the voice. And again, we're leaning towards cheap cards because we'll always, we can always get expensive cards later. It's not hard to find expensive cards in the cube. Uh, Elish Norn proper here. Um... 3-5, kind of fine. We got Jewel Mine Overseer, a really fun card. Uh, it shuffles in seven copies of seven dwarves to your deck and then gives them all the, the ability to cantrip. It's actually a pretty insane card. 
Uh, it's a really fun card, too, where it shuffles in all these cantripping lords into your deck, and then also it just draws a card every turn, too. This card's actually insane. I'm actually big, big on this card. Also, a rip apart, pretty good removal spell. Uh, having this sort of flexibility is pretty awesome in cube, but I think Overseer is great, and also it's a really fun card, too. So, take the Overseer. We get a Stalwart Realm Warden. They have for a first strike lifelink. When it ETBs, the next non creature spell target opponent cast costs two more to cast. Pretty cool. Uh, Copper Line Gorge. We got Elvish Mystic, Death Rite Shaman, Line of War Visionary, and Touch the Spirit Realm. Again, I'm not really confident on our ability to cast a turn one Line of War Elf uh, with all of our tap lands and fetch lands. So I think I would take Visionary over Elvish Mystic in our deck. Um, I'm on, I'm on Copper Line Gorge, though. Um, i to take the Gorge. Our man is nice. Uh, inspiring Vantage. We got a, uh, what is this? Wing Bane Vantasaur. We're going to have a 4 5 reach. EDB choose one. Conjure Savage Stomp or Conjure Naturalize. That's a pretty good card. Just a 4 5 reach with a, uh, where you draw a card. Uh, Worm Quell is insane, though. And now we're at the point where, like, okay, we have a ton of lands. Don't have that many Boom Booms. Let's take a Boom Boom here. Taking a lot of lands. Worm Quell is a great Boom Boom. And uh, that's the thing. You kind of like at your, at your, pick, pick your poison to your Boom Booms as the game goes on. So. We got Sunfall, but we're super creaturey. So I don't think we want that kind of effect. Amara is pretty sweet. It's more of a convokey go wide card, but it is a pretty sweet card as far as it's, it's two three. It just draws you a card. Um, I don't know if we're gonna play it or not. Take the Amara. We're not gonna play a one drop, and then Nightpack Ambush is not very good for us. So take the Amara. Uh, we see a Triome here. This is a red white land. Even if it's not on all of our colors, it is a dual land. Uh, Interrupter is interesting uh, as a kind of interaction thing. We're not really a flash deck though. It's kind of eh. And then Wolf of Haven taps for green. It does ramp, but it's not really thrilling. Right, I'll take the Haven. I would, I would like to not play it if possible, but... All right, so Sundown Pass Tables, as does the Huntsman's Redemption, which is only just a fine card. It's not bad. Uh, sacrifice Token. It does play well with the Ajani, honestly. So you make a 3-3. Three, three. We can sacrifice a, to a creature to get a, a creature or land. Uh, there's a Sundown Pass. Just take the pass. Just take the land. Our mana base is a banger. Stopping Ground Tables. Wow. So big, let's check here, though. We do have, um, where are we at on playables? We're at 15. We are the land on playables right now. Uh, let's take, I can't, I can't resist. So, all right, yeah, there you go. The thing is, like, we're land on playables, but, like, they come around really late. So, take the Trailblazer. Now we're at 16 playables. Rip Apart or Dust Animus. Dust Animus is cool. It's a pretty cool threat. I think Rip Apart's a flexible card you want in a cube, killing uh, artifacts or enchantments. And then the Realm Warden. I don't think we're going to play this card, but we'll see. So, Going to pack three, our mana base is absolutely phenomenal. We have, you know, a bajillion awesome dual lands. And we're going to look at the pack and see a lot of good stuff here. We got Nissa Ascendant Animus. It's an awesome Planeswalker. We got Kellen. Pretty cool card. Virtue of Loyalty. Thalia, not really us. Uh, Rada, Air, Heart of Keld is a fine card. It's a 3-3. Three, three. You can play lands off the top of your library. Pretty cool. But I think uh, we're looking for Boom Booms, and this is a great one. You know, one important thing in cube is having cards that are powerful and flexible. And having a disenchant on a planeswalker is awesome. And it can also be a threat too. And we're a little light in this five mana range you can cast it for. So I think we're gonna Nissa here. Um, you know, passing virtue is kind of cool too. Virtue is a good card, you know. Uh, but it might even table. Give the white cards a table last packs. Take the Nissa. Vornclex is kind of a banger. Uh, also, Love Struck Beast, Key to the Archive, Bank Buster. We got a Foothills though, and we're gonna sign the Foothills. Uh, we have so many fetchable lands, and our mana base is just out of this world good right now. So, yeah. Vorinclex is cool. We're not doing that much counter stuff, realistically. Uh, I'm just going to pass on that. Take the foothills. And there's actual counter spell. We got Stoneforge Mystic. We got Sapphire Collector. So, 3 mana for a 3-3 prowess. If you cast second non-creature spell on turn, conjure a Mox Sack Fire. That's not us, unfortunately. Uh, Lyra Dawnbringer is fine. Uh, it's not like the best card of all time, but it's a good, it's a good, uh, good card against aggro decks. Uh, we got Jugan defends the temple here, makes a monk, adds some counters, transforms, it's not great either. Uh, Fanacaronis is pretty good though. Um, yeah, it's a pretty solid card. We're definitely a little more green than I would like to be with Flage, but our mana base is like we can cast Flage anyway, I think. Take the Fanatic here. Take the nice cheap card. Bane Slayers are a diamond dungeon. Uh, Sarah Paragon, Intrepid... Ab oh, we got a Fury. Ooh. Fury is uh, Fury's a very mean one. Uh, Fury is about as good as it gets. Uh, yeah. Windmill Slam, Fury. Hopefully we'll table the uh, the Restless Prairie. Or maybe the Endurance or Paragon, something like that. But yeah, Fury is busted. 
I think our mana base is so good that we can play, you know, basically anything here. We've got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 Dom Basics in our deck, which is great. Ideally, when you go to build your, mat your, your mana base for your cube deck, you're going to be adding, like, 4 Basics and have almost all non-Basics. That's that's the goal. Because you, you should think about your cube mana base like your constructed mana base. You know, how many Basics do you play, even in a two-color deck in standard, right? You have 4 Fast Lands, 4 Pain Lands, 4 Creature Lands, 4 this, 4 that. Okay, we got some big ones here. Uh, the Great Henge is pretty wild. Uh, let's check the power and toughness of our creatures, right? We have four... I mean, that's not really six. Four, three... It's not super high. The Henge is not the easiest thing to cast. It is an unbelievably powerful card, though. So Wild and the Cattle also. You can see here the low rating. It's not really a not really a great card, you know? Probably tables. A uh, little, little small. This is definitely a, a go-big kind of cube. Uh, so, like, one drops aren't as good, unless you're, like, mono-red, basically. But I'll take the Henge. Figure out a way to get it in there. I think we're not going to play this Haven. And you can see how we're already at 20 playables. There's so many playables, you never have to worry about getting playables, basically. Here's a Heath. Going to slam it. We got Resto, Safekeeping, a Volcanic Hammer, but whatever. Take the on-color Fetch Slam, which is great. And again, we're at 20 playables right now. We could play the Haven. We could play the Realm Warden. Uh, so, we're, your, our deck's almost done. Uh, and then again, our mana base is out of this world. Good, which is great. It's like looking pretty nice. Yeah, a lot of twos also, which is good. A couple of removal spells. A couple boom booms. A little bit of ramp. A little bit of fixing. And uh, looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased so far. This is a good example of what you want to be doing. You know, and, and honestly, it's funny. You know, our goal is to end with 24 playables. Because you want to have all your lands. It's very, very easy to end a cube draft with 33 playables and be like, all right, I just have to cut 10 of these, basically, and that kind of sucks. You're just wasting picks. So, explore Archangel Avacyn or Magda or Beseju. Um, I think we just explore here. Explore's pretty nice. Little ramp. Yeah, just playables for days, you know? Uh, what is this? The Intrepid Perry and Billion Dollars is a mana dork. This can cast dinosaur spells. Uh, I don't really have any dinosaur spells, so... Quake Ball is pretty cool. Just a big idiot. Uh, pretty powerful card. Warchief is better for staying alive. Uh, it gains life. Take the Warchief here. I think we're pretty good on four drops. I want to find a good five drop. Gaining life is great too. Our pack tables with all these great cards in it. Conscripts is pretty awesome. You can steal Planeswalkers before they ultimate. And just steal big things. Have big plays. Rod is a good card. I mean, it's, you know, it's just fine for playing extra lands uh, off the top. And every, every land you play off the top is like drawing a card. Kellen is not great in our deck. Mindstone is fine in our deck. I'll take the Conscripts. Again, I think we want another big player, too. Take the Conscripts. The Vor and Glex tables also. Uh, I think we're a little heavy on big stuff. Now we have two six drops. And Lovestruck Beast plays really well with the uh, with the Great Henge while also being a good defensive card. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, good cards stay alive against mono-red decks. You know, you're, you are playing best of one. So you got to try and make sure you're, you know, making your deck good against a wide variety of strategies. Bane Slayer tables, obviously. And that's our 25th card already, so we probably won't even play it, but take the Bane Slayer. And you can see here now, we, we spent literally a dozen picks on lands and still have more than enough playables. Take another land, cool. Hey, <laughs> Yo, bro, I heard you like green cards. Uh, I mean, we're not playing wild in the Coddle this deck, I don't think. Tumbleweg, we're not playing these cards. Maybe we'll play the Coddle, maybe we'll play it, but there's a cat for our Johnny. Obviously, we are Naya colors, it's cheap. Uh, we gotta cut a few cards here. More green cards, huh? All right. Take the footfalls when they were playing that. Um, I wouldn't mind cutting this, cutting this cultivate. Let's take a look at our, our cards here. So, I would say overall, a pretty good cube draft. Uh, our deck seems pretty good. And a pretty good example of how to draft the cube. Because a lot of people, when they do the first cube draft, they end up with 35 cards, 4 Wrath of Gods, 40 creatures, you know. Wow, we are off the charts here. Alright, so, let's take a look. So, we're at 26 playables. We'd like to have 24 playables. 16 land is the baseline best of one. Also, in your cube drafts, you can play less lands than regular limited for two reasons. One, you have a bunch of duels, so you have many more sources of your colors. And two, it's more like Instructed, where you're going to have cantrips and cards that draw cards and cards that find lands. You know, you you don't play as high of a ratio of lands in Instructed as you do in Limited, uh, because you have cards that kind of help find your lands too. So 15, 16 lands is a, is a good baseline. Our deck's pretty, pretty chunky though, so. All right, so I like to cut this Cultivate. It just, I'd rather just play creatures. Uh, I don't need to ramp like that. Uh, Wild and the Coddle is not really good enough, I don't think. I mean, Wild and the Coddle, we have Lyra. Could also be a cut, uh, although it is good in some matchups. 
We have a lot of life gain, though. We have Henge gains life, Worm Coil gains life, Workshop War Chief gains life, um, Flage gains life. So again, you're trying to look at shoring up your deck's weaknesses, right? So if our deck felt weak to Mono Red, I would play Lyra. It's best to one, but this could be a good card, but it's not really. So we're going to take the Lyra. I'm going to keep the Dakotl. It's just cheap. It's a cheap, cheap creature. It plays well with the Johnny, and like just keep a lot, keep us alive early. Our late game is pretty awesome. Uh, plays well with the uh, the Raid Henge also. You can play it immediately, which is kind of cool. And uh, this is it. I'm pretty happy. I have 24 cards here. So we're going to go up here and add our lands, which there are a lot of, obviously. So we're going to add, uh, usually good to put them in piles of what they do. So this is a district. Red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, white, red, white, red, white, green, white. And then we have uh, a pile for the fetch lands, because fetch lands get everything, right? So Gemmer's Garden's here. And then we have Mesa gets the garden, uh, or the parlor, or the commercial district. The Marsh Flats gets the parlor or the garden. The Winter Peak gets anything. And the Foothills gets anything. So our mana base is out of this world good. We have, even before adding basics, we have 12 red, 10 green, and 9 white sources. We see here we're mostly green. We're going to add a lot of forest here. Unfortunately, forests are bad with Flage. The Flage is great anyway. So we're going to add forest, mountain, plains. Um, and that might actually just be it. That's a little more red than I would like, honestly. Uh, but the thing is also, our fetch lands, we get to decide what colors we want to. So these are like, you know, uh, the, the source that we want. I kind of want an extra forest. Yeah, let's, let's, actually, let's, let's cut a mountain. Let's cut the mountain. I'll play a basic mountain. Let's play an extra forest. Because you want uh, you want green early for sure. But our mana base is, is literally out of this world good. So I'm not worried we're going to have any mana problems at all because our, our mana is insane. Uh, so there you go. There's our draft deck. So there's, your, there's our cube draft deck. Let's get right into our games and see how it goes. Uh, but overall, I would say pretty pleased. Pretty good curve. A lot of power. Great fixing. Couldn't ask for more. All right. Uh, great mana on the play. Got an explore. Feeling good. We're going to Mesa and probably get a Surveil Land, honestly. I mean, if you need to try them. So we got Surveil Land, Copper Line Gorge, Explore. Set up for a Bloodbraid Elf. They're going to crack their fetch. Going to 17, maybe? Nope. A maze. Should I main phase the maze? Sure. We're so sweaty waiting to their end step, you know? They keep the card. All right. So, let's get a uh, elegant parlor. Surveil. Keep it Heath on top. Having to draw land. So, let's go land. Explore. Fanatic of Ronus. And I guess we'll just surveil again, right? We'll just go all the way. Our mana base is great. Turn three blood right off on the play. We can also go fanatic into into Amara, but here's an incubation druid. Actually, killing that's a pretty big game. Uh, maybe we'll just kill that, slow them down. Let's get our district. Surveil again. This time we. Oh my God, that's awesome. We mill the flash. We're pretty close to even activating it already. Jeez. And now we draw bristly bill. Uh, I want a fanatic. We're gonna fanatic and kill this thing. I think so fanatic, land, kill this matador, and we're off of the races right now. Five mana to their two, flage already in the bin, just about ready to come back. Bloodbird elf ready to roll. Land of war visionary. That's not a problem. Cliff top retreat. So, um. We can go Bristly Bill, Land Drop, Bloodbraid Elf. That's pretty good. Add a counter to Old Bill, I think. Bloodbraid Elf. Cascade into a... Oh my god, we're doing it. Here's a Jewel Mine Overseer. This is going to conjure seven dwarfs from my deck. Come into play. And now I can just mirror off all this. Oh my god, we're doing it. Let's go. Spellbook time. We get Knight Errant, Ancient Imperious Sword, or Nissa. I'm an Imperious Sword. I think we're going to go big. I'm down. Down like a clown. Should have a big Imperious Sword next turn. We have... We're one card short of bringing back Flage. Got to get an extra card off of Overseer, too. Old Bristly Bill's popular. Play a land. Add a counter. Put it on Old Bristly Bill. And... Hold on. Top card is a Zealous Conscripts. Heh! <laughs> We can Conscripts, steal their Bristly Bill, and Legend rule it. That's awesome. Uh, the problem is, then I can't Imperious Soar. We'd be one short. And Imperious Soaring is pretty powerful. Um, 
if I were to, hold on, if I were to, actually, I could Trailblazer, then I have enough mana to do, I could do all of it. Oh, I could do all of it then. Oh my god. Oh no, I can't. I'm also one short, but whatever. Here's this. Here's Conscripts. Make a token. Oh, I can do it. Steal Bristly Bill. We're going to Legend Rule and keep uh, the one owned by me. And then we're going to Imperious Sword. Man, what a game. Oh, man. All right. Just 2020. Your turn. Hope you got airbags. Thrag. Listen. I love Thrag Dust as much as the next guy. All right. But uh, I don't think Thrag Dust is good enough here. Just going to throw that one out there. We could also double the counters of our, our Imperious Sword twice. I'm just going to do it. Where they concede. Double. Double. Mario Lemieux! No, I didn't get to attack! <sighs> Cube draft in a nutshell, my friends. Alright. Uh, it's a pretty good hand. We do have Love Struck Beast into a Great Henge. Uh, get some fetch lands and stuff. We can keep this. It's a little slow, but Love Struck Beast being a curve in and of itself is not too bad. And then, of course, turning on the Henge is great, too, so... Probably going to fire up a, a District on turn one. And then we'll go... Yeah, we'll go District on one. We're going to reveal a Trailblazer. I'm in. Next turn will be Heart's Desire into Fetchland for another thing. Ooh. Bronco's pretty nasty. Not going to lie. Here's Heart's Desire. Here's a Heath. Got to get the Red-White Land. And... Got a little work to do. This Bronco is going to be uh, dark hopping all over us. They're going to reveal a Urchai. Take four. Mm -hmm. A little Grixis action. And a Fable. Man, good start. Jeez. All right, so they have a Fable. We have a Elegant Parlor. We're going to reveal a Chandra to the bin. That is definitely... We have plenty of big things to do, so... We draw Voice of Resurgence. Uh, it's got to be Love Shark Beast, so... Play Retreat, play Love Shark Beast, hope I don't kill it. Uh, Henge will cost four, this available. Unfortunately, we can't play Henge into your voice, but that'd be pretty cool. Here comes Fable. They might just Urtai kill the Love Shark and attack again, because they have two things that really want to attack. It's going to land, Fire Prismatic Vista, Rack of Fetch. And then if they do that, they have a Gonti to steal my cards. This is interesting, because, like, now they can't attack with their Bronco or their Fable token. So, like, that's a pretty big game being able to do that, but... I have a lot of bangers to steal, obviously. Gonti's a really, really good cube card. But, that being said, we can resolve a Henge here. And... I'd love to draw any creature that costs green mana only, two or less. Rockfall Veil, sure. So... Yeah, I mean, we could play Silvala. But I think we should get the Henge down this turn. It ramps and they, they probably can't kill it because they're Grixis, so. Play the Henge. Just gonna make some mana and gain some life and just say go. And hope that we can untap and start unloading creatures. That's the plan, you know. Their draw is really, really good in the play here. Bronco into Fable into Gonti is a really insane uh, opening, so. We can actually sort of combo with their reflection. We can steal it, copy conscripts, untap it, copy conscripts, untap it, copy conscripts. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of mana, but... Alright, they find a Deluge, they have an Urtai. Uh, this is not going as well as I would like it to be. Alright, let's play a Voice Resurgence and see what they do. So we'll get a counter and draw a card if it happens. Okay. I think they might have us here. Uh, I'd like to draw a Fury. Off of this. Copper Line Gorge is not Fury. Uh, Alright. This is not good. We have Swords Plowshares, Strangle, Wild McConnell. We're going to play Savala and draw one card. Um, well, I guess we also have... I guess I want to leave up the red or the white, so we'll do this. Alright, here's Savala. We draw a Questing Beast. Alright, I mean... 
If we can hold on for a turn, maybe. This is going to be tough. Can't copy Urtai with Reflection. It's a legendary, so... Gonna copy the Bronco. Alright. Crew Bronco. If they... If they Alright, cool. So, wait, so they, they're not going to kill this yet. They hit Cold Steel Heart. They go to... Uh, they go to uh, 15. We're still at 11. I'm sorry, we, we, lost, we lost the damage, but whatever. Here's Cold Steel Heart. Name Blue. And, alright, we're maybe still in it here. Uh, Worm Coil costs this much. We have we'll have two left over. They have two mana up. Every creature we cast, we get counters of Savala, too. Well, oh, Savala's after mana, too, I guess. It's pretty cool. Uh, all right. I kind of, like, don't want to play the best thing if they have a counter spell. I also want to keep myself open to drawing cards. By Questing Beast and draw a four-drop or less, I'm really, really happy, but it's kind of risky. I could always untap my Savala with Conscripts. So I'll all tap for... Alright, let's, let's play... Let's start a beast. Let's see what happens. Damn it. Alright. That's what we feared. So if this taps for two... Two red. I should play Worm Coil, actually. I never watched my Worm Coil. Alright, so... Bunch of forest. Cast Worm Coil. Make a token, get a counter, draw a card, gain some life. And now we say go. This is pretty good, actually. So now we have a 7-7 seven, seven Worm Coil. Typically, Grixis struggles against Worm Coils. They can't exile it. And we have four other blockers, too. Okay. Now, if they attack, I just gain seven. So it's pretty good for us. Extinction event? Oh, my God. Uh, so even will kill a lot of their stuff, too. So... Just exile one. Well, I think it's actually good for us. Now our 15. They would lose everything but reflection. We would lose everything, period. And I can just Nissa the reflection. Or I could try for the, the Conscript combo to kill them. So, I could cast Conscripts. Steal reflection. And then keep making copies of Conscripts to untap it. I'm going to go for the Kiki Jiki kill. Uh, this just seems too fun. I, can, I can't say no. Here's Conscripts. All right, steal this. Draw cards, Fury. Copy Conscripts. Untap, Reflection. Copy Conscripts. Untap, Reflection. <laughs> ah, Splinter Twin! All right, on the play, it's pretty good. Uh, we can keep this. We have a mana dork. We have a, a, a surveil land. Try and find land number four or three. I mean, we have bloodbury elf ready to go. So, all right, crank up the old fetch land. Get elegant parlor and surveil. All right, parlor is here. Thank you. We see a non-land, bidding basically any non-land there. So, all right, another non-land. All right, that's not ideal, but here's fanatic. Hopefully, they don't kill it. We draw the land. Awesome. Alright. Uh, it's Bloodbird Elf time. Turn three Bloodbird Elf on the play. Cascade into a bristly bill. Get her done. Like to cast Nissa next. Just a naked Lurus. Oh, we miss on land. That sucks. Alright. Uh, let's explore. Drawing a land here would be so good. Oh, it's so good. Land. Add a counter to Bloodbird Elf. And now I have enough mana to freaking Chandra. Oh my god. Get out of here. You're done. Pack it up. Chandra minus two. Let's kill this thing. You're out of here. Oh yeah. Woo! Cry havoc! And let's slip the dogs of war. Alright, so not a great hand. We're on the draw. Uh, we have great mana, obviously. 
Uh, removal spell, four drop, five drop, six drop. That being said, we're on the draw with good mana, removal spell. We can get a, uh, a scry land and kind of try and find some more action uh, in the early turns. I guess it's fine. We're going to keep this. Ideally, they don't go turn one, Goblin Guide, or Land or Rolf here, you know? I guess Goblin Guide's not an arena, but you get the idea. So Sphere, so on. Tap, Restless Spire. Cool. Draw land. I want to be under the sea in a Jetmer's garden with you. Nine zero zero five two zero. It's like one of those codes you get when you like, you know, two factor auth authenticate your account. Rafine's Tower. Agent of Rafine. This is a pretty crazy card. One blue for a one two. Two tap. Choose target opponent. Conjure a duplicate of a top card of their library into your hand. Cast it for any color, and then exile the card face down. So they get to just kind of draw off your deck. Uh, we're just gonna kill that. I'm not gonna let that let that roll here. Um, we draw a six drop, unfortunately, so we're a little heavy here. But we have the lands to make it. We should draw one more land to get things going, and then obviously we can just draw anything cheap would be awesome too. I think drawing any card that costs two or three would be awesome next turn. We have our scry lands too, though. So I haven't drawn flage yet, you know. Flage, flage, here's a fury. Right. So we'll get a uh, a white, red land. We have Trailblazer next turn. This is like the most the entire top end of our curve. We have a Henge, a Nissa, and a Conscripts. That's it. That's the entire top end of our curve. So here's a Rona, Herald of Invasion. Not as scary in cube as it is in uh, constructed, obviously, where it's built around. But crack the fetch, no cycle, please. And we see uh, an elegant parlor. Surveil. Great Henge. Oh, Great Henge is so good, but really uncastable right now. Um, that sucks. Got to fetch an untapped land to cast our Trailblazer, too. The thing is, if, I, if we play Trailblazer and they deal with it, this is not going to work. Uh, we have too much gas here. We're trying to dump it. Our hand's just all gas. We just need to bridge the gap a little bit and draw lands. And... Great Henge is neither of those things, sadly, so I will not be greedy. I draw the other stars. Now it's actually our entire top end in our hand, uh, which is cool, I guess. Uh, crack a fetch. We're going to get just a forest here. I think it's fine. We have double white, double red. We have all of our colors. Yep, so play this. Play a Trailblazer. And now we are officially out. We need to draw a land or a cheap spell. There's only one card in our entire deck anymore that uh, that we cannot cast. So if we, if we draw a Zealous concept, Concepts exactly next turn... I will, uh, I'll, uh, put on sunglasses the rest of the match that are right here on the table for some reason. Any untapped land, I think Bloodbraid Elf's a great draw, Flage, Overseer. Mostly just land is a good draw, so they're going to loot away a Sunfall. And then play, oops, play uh, another Triome. All right, what do you got, friend? Three cards left. Not that many cards. All right, where are we at? Thinking. Remember, folks, Bloomboro orders. Promo code Jim five five percent off your order on CoolStuffInc.com and. You get a copy of my brand new token, which looks freaking awesome. It's a Karnstruck token. Uh, the whole family's on there. Andre Garcia, another phenomenal job on the art. And uh, if you use my code, 5% off your order and the token, get your Bloom Burrow. So it looks freaking awesome. I'm super excited about it. Next week is 10 new brews. Next week is uh, we'll have a cool stuff video in standard with the new cards. Uh, I'm pumped. You should be too. Really, really exciting. Full set resort up on YouTube. Bronson Mythic's going to start in two weeks. Uh, the whole new content cycle started, and everyone's super excited about Bloomborough uh, because it's just a really exciting set. Uh, the theme is really cool. The set is refreshing, refreshingly simple. Uh, you know, not a very not wordy, but the mechanics are really cool. Looks great. All right, we draw a strangle, which is not great, but sure, we will strangle this. All right, I mean, the show goes on. You know, like. We're at 18. They have no pressure. So, got a lot of boom boom. We also have an uncounterable boom boom, which is a nice thing to do because if they have counter spells up the wazoo, you know, we draw a Mera. All right. So, we'll cast a Mera. Uh, 
Usually you want to get focus card. This card's not great in our deck, but it's still a two for one. You know, EDB, draft a spellbook card. We have a lot of creatures in our deck, as we've seen in the stuff. They're going to sell it here. That's fine. Let's put it on the bottom. So, Mary goes to the bottom. No problem. They have a 3 3 flyer in play, which is now a clock, but again, we're just full of gas, so hopefully we just draw. Just draw land. Like, I would take land or fly. Land, flodge, or blood bird elf are the three cards I want to draw here. Land is good. So. We're going to start by playing the Warchief. I, I think they have a counterspell. I think the Fury is more important than Warchief is, but if Warchief resolves, I'm pretty happy too, so. What counterspell do they have? Counterspells are pretty good in these sort of mid rangey matchups. Oh my god, that's an insane one. That is insane. Alright, uh, yeah, that's probably going to be the game. Uh, yeah. That's bad. We could Fury here, pitch cast to kill the subtlety, but I think we probably need the Chandra too, so we're gonna just hope they don't have any left. But counter spells are good against mid-range decks, and mid-range is kind of the default of the cube. So it is very important to make sure you have good cards against counter spells in your mid-range deck, like Chandra, like Voice of Resurgence, cheap threats, etc. etc. Alright. Uh I mean, we're just gonna cast Fury here, they're gonna counter it, we're gonna lose. Just kinda is what it is. You know? It's fine. Kill subtlety blocked gear hulk would be ideal, but with four or three cards a day, and I'm not feeling particularly great about this. They could have fired up their uh, their reckless restless spire and chose not to. Also, which is interesting. Kind of a tough game. We just you know drew all our top end cards and draw enough lands. Uh, happens. We have plenty of cards in the in the two to four mana range we could have drawn uh, in the early game and didn't. And it's, is what it is. Fury's on the stack. I'm not sure what they're thinking about. They have a counterspell instead on board. So, all right, I will deal four damage here. And then we will try and block the Gear Hulk. They're gonna cycle a Magma Opus. Man, they just missed uh, Gear Hulk Magma Opus. Once they have another way to copy or something here, that'd be sick. Oh my god. C double! Alright. Listen. Sometimes your opponent does some cool stuff and you gotta just tip your hat because this is uh, pretty cool. So they got a Gear Hulk, and then they're gonna discard Magma Opus, copy Gear Hulk, and then copy Magma Opus, and uh, win the game that way. So. You just tip your caps to dime. Say, good game, my friend. Cool deck. So, uh, we're dead. You got me. Cool stuff. C double. A lot of the cool things you don't get to do in Constructed because the cards just aren't quite good enough, uh, but really, really cool in cube. GG. All right. We are on the drop. We've got Bristly Bill, Worm Coil, Hinge, a couple Fetch Lands. Not a great hand, honestly, but I think it's not bad enough to mulligans we're going to keep. We can go flats for our Jetmer's Garden, turn two Bristly Bill and get some fetch lands going. They're going to fire up turn one Utopia Sprawl. Very powerful. Uh, ramp is very, very important in cube. So we could, like, go, you know, Bristly Bill. We could forest, forest, Bristly Bill, try and save our fetch lands. But I think getting the, getting the Jetmer's Garden first is a is a big deal. She makes our mana perfect for the rest of the game. And then we can kind of go from there. All right. Undercity Sewers. They name Black. That's pretty cool looking forest, right? All right, but they are. Rest. So they have five mana on turn three on the play. That is pretty busted. Here's the Jetmer's Garden. I kind of wish I could ball get my hand now, honestly, but here's Jetmer's Garden. We draw Fanatic of Ronus. Uh, sure. So we're going to Fanatic here. Oh, let's actually put the Clips off Retreat. Play Fanatic. So we can go Bristly Bill, Fetch Land anyway. And we draw four drops or something like that. We can go on, go on that. So this taps for some mana. And honestly, if we can get this Bristly Bill... Actually, yeah, one Fetch Land makes Bristly Bill into a... Uh, a 4 4, and then I can Fanatic for 4 mana. And then I can maybe cast the Henge too. Let's see what happens. They're going to play a Salvala Eager Trailblazer. We're going to draw Bloodbraid Elf. Uh, okay. We can. F Let's just see what happens. We go Bristly Bill. We fetch land. I actually didn't play a Mountain in my deck, which is funny, so I had to fetch a. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I have an untapped. Uh, Untap red source. See so if this costs six. If I fetch a light, it'll cost five. I can cast it though. So I can, I can cast the red engine next turn. It's pretty sick. Let's fetch. And oh, we have stopping ground. Cool. So I could I could, could cast blood Bray off instead of playing the hinge. But so we, we were to play untap land. This would be a four four. This will cost five. We have five mana with the fanatic Aronis. Uh, we're just gonna decide if we're gonna cast the blood Bray off or the 
Henge. I think it's just a Henge. So, pay two life. Put a counter here. Now this costs three. Cast the Henge. And I would say we're in pretty good shape. Let's say go. Next turn we can cast Bloodbraid Elf and Worm Coil Engine and draw a bunch of cards. So, yeah, but it's on them to have a good turn this, this uh, turn for sure. Here's a Plains. They have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. That's a good turn. Here's a Grave Titan. They get a Mercenary. They get a Grave Titan. They get some zombies. Buckle up. Haha, <laughs> turn four Grave Titan. This thing has Vigilance, too, and they're coming in. All right. Well, we got some work to do, folks. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Worm Coil is great here to block Titan, obviously, but if they have a sword or something like that, it'd be pretty bad for us. Choose a color. Add a mana. Oh, my God. So, this adds a mana for each different power they have. They have one, two, three, four. They play a four drop. Wingbane Mantisaur. They get a Stomp or a Naturalize. Jeez. Man, their draw is insane. Um, they're doing a lot of what we're, you know, we're trying to do, too, though. You know, where we're you know, just kind of ramping, playing powerful things, having good mana. So they have a Naturalize. We're going to untap. We draw a Sundown Pass. All right. So, we currently have four, five, six mana. And then we have the Hinge, too. So, you can go... But just start by playing Worm Coil immediately. Just start there. See what happens. So, play Worm Coil. Death Touch, that's right, guys. Gets a counter. He's a Johnny. Um, so, we're going to land Bloodbraid Elf, right? Just see what happens. Put a counter on Bristly Build. Make it a 5 5. It's a pretty good, pretty big deal. So, play this. Counter here. Play Bloodbraid Elf. And we hit a Rip Apart. Deal three or naturalize. Unfortunately, not a lot of good targets here. I guess we're going to kill the Paradise Druid and be pretty sad about it. Yeah, sure. Not not the best hit off Bloodbird Elf, but... So we'll deal three to this. This is going to come to play as a 4-3. We'll draw a card. All right, Druid. All right. So unfortunately, now they can uh, naturalize my Henge. I got some value off of it, but... We got some work to do here. I'm not going to lie. They have this Grave Titan, which has Death Touch. We can trade with our Worm Coil, which is pretty good. They naturalized the Worm Coil. That'd be insane. So, if you get to untap with the Henge, you get to draw a bunch of more cards, too, which is great. So, and this is pretty indicative of what a cube game on a looks like. It's kind of a, a fun, crazy slugfest. Um, you know, that card's like Days or or whatever else. So, they're going to pump their Grave Titan. They didn't need to do this, obviously, because Death Touch. Uh, but sure, we're going to block... Just take our trade. Kill the Grave Titan. Get some tokens. We are going to naturalize this response. It is non-token. doesn't matter really. But that's pretty bad for us because that was our, our way to get ahead here. They're going to play a Menagerie Curator. Which uh, taps for mana for things. We draw a workshop. Board. All right. So we're like... We're going places. Uh, they have a really, really wide board. But we can put some counters on these uh, these worms and stuff and just keep going. We have a ton of mana, so we got lamb. We got nine mana right now, so we have to play everything. We're going to put a counter on the lifelinker, I think. We're at 21. Yeah, just start working on the lifelinker. We also have the ability to just activate Bristly Bill and double all the counters, which is pretty sweet, too. So, But right now, we're going to cast everything, I think. We're going to cast uh, tap for four, five. Cast Workshop Warchief. Play a Johnny. And play Paradise Druid. So I'd love to have that uh, that thing in play, but sure. So I do this. And we'll just say go, I guess. And we're going to work on uh, bristly billing and doubling our counters and stuff. They're going to play their own Worm Coil Engine. So, of course, one thing about, you know, normally in a cube draft, you play uh, in a pod. You, have, you and eight friends or whatever, or seven friends draft your cube, and only one of each card's in play. But because you're playing a cube in an arena, you draft with eight folks and just enter a league pool and play against people. So, obviously, we have similar cards here. They have a... Drew, we have a Drew, they have a better worm coil. We have a worm coil. Just part of the, you know, a lot better than waiting for your rounds to be up uh, in an eight-person draft, which takes forever. So, you know, a bit of a cost of convenience, but they are really, really wide here with tokens. Um, I think we're really, really happy to trade our Johnny for this zombie. I mean, the token and flip our Johnny, which is insane. So, this is a. Now they're reading a Johnny, decide they don't want to attack here, sure. Complicated. Crazy games, you know? Lots of fun. Here, 
almost a commander like board state for all you commander players out there they're gonna attack all right sure i would love this this is fantastic this is so good for us so we're going to trade flip a johnny uh yes please and now johnny uh so johnny ooh, gosh, that's great too so we're going to uh to battle you got a counter each cat i control which is none i can make a cat and then it deals damage equal to the number of creatures i control to any target that is insane so that was a huge blunder on their part i think uh we're going to mesa and add a counter to we actually can activate bristly build twice and double the number of counters of creatures i control twice which is insane i'm gonna put a counter here i think and then we're gonna crack the fetch land gotta get an untapped land here so we can uh activate bristly build twice I the druid actually that was stupid. I could have got a, a surveil land, but whatever. Um, and then we're gonna kill the Savala with the Ajani, I think. Yeah, just put counters everywhere. I think start doubling like crazy. And then we're going to make it make a cat token. And then when you do, if you control a red permanent other than this, deals damage equal to its number of creatures. And so we actually just like, like nug them eventually too. But so let's just kill this uh, Savala. Let's start working ball. on the board. And then we have double bristly bill pump. That takes eight. And now we can fire it for... The problem is that they have this worm coil, which is a really annoying thing for us. Uh, double number counters on each creature you control. Worm coil is annoying to get through. It's going to cost us a lot of stuff. I mean, we can just fire the war, the war chief, maybe. I guess we just attack, right? Just like sending all of these things. Yeah, whatever. Send in all of these... We have good blockers, too, so... And then we'll just pump this thing twice. This has Trample, Lifelink, Death Touch. They all get through the Worm Coil, so... You know, once we draw exactly Sword Shapow Stairs, we gotta, we gotta get through it somehow, so this is fun. Man, Sword's gonna block. That's gonna block. Yeah, I, think we've turn, I think we turned the tide here, for sure. Uh, Alright. I think they're missing that we can activate it twice. Uh, so, activate it. Double one. Activate it again. And then, uh... So, uh... Deal a lot of damage. Gain some life. That was uh, a pretty good combat step for us, if I do say so myself. And, uh, looks like we've navigated our way through. Awesome. Sweet game. That's a really... Really, really indicative of your, of your first year. I had a lot of fun. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, for cube game. You know, lots of cool things happening. Board gets complicated. Things get crazy. You know, crazy big swingy plays. Lots of fun. The cats. Um. All right. So, unfortunately, we have just two lands and a tap land. We have a surveil, too, though. We can keep this. We got Nakata, Johnny. Pretty aggro draw for our kind of the more mid-rangey deck, but it's cool to have the ability to do that. And uh, we got some good mana here, obviously, because our mana is great. Posted a mulligan. We're going to district. We're going to fire up and find a Chandra in the bin. Uh, six drop, not what we're looking for. So we get a Johnny on turn two, maybe? Wouldn't they hit a tap land, honestly? Jewel Mine Overseer. All right, yeah, we'll just Johnny. We'd like to go to Nakal into a Johnny if possible, but this is fine, too. We want to draw a land. Obviously, we have a, a three and some fours. Uh, any land would be great, although we can play Nakato as well. Overseer is an awesome card. Here's Fanatic of Ronus. Man, they are coming at us. And a Shrion. We draw the land. Sweet. So, uh, we could threaten attack with the Cat Warrior and just threaten to flip a Johnny. I guess that's actually great, great for us, so let's attack. Cool. Let's flip it. Overseer to defend, and then we make a new token. Yeah, they, they, they thought better of it. So, we're going to play Jewel Mine Overseer. What's this card do? So, this card does two things. It conjures seven copies of seven dwarves into our deck, but they all have the added text of ETB draw card, which is insane. And, uh, in our upkeep, we just exile top card. We can play it this turn. Let's so draw the card every turn. So, they got, man, they got triumphs for days. We exile Fanatic of Ronus. We draw a Jetmer's Garden. Fantastic. Uh, great for us, honestly. Now we get to attack with our cat again. Hopefully flip our thing. So we can kill the Bristly Bill then. Just getting free damage in. Free real estate. Here's a land. Here's a Fanatic. Here's an Akal. 
and just there you go. So we're deed up super well. Uh, if the Nakatl dies, a Johnny flips also. Once it flips, we can start shooting things and making tokens, which is insane. We got Questing Beast on tap. We got Bloodbraid Elf, the Trailblazer. And then Fnatic might make a bunch of green too. So we can actually, we can, we can play a four guard. We can play, we can play, play Questing Beast also, which is insane. So play a land, get a Bristly Build token. Now that Fnatic is on, they have nine mana this turn. All right. So their deck is similar to ours. Uh, there's a Great Henge. Upkeep, we're going to exile a Fury. Okay. Uh, I think Fury it is. Fury is going to come in and kill this Bristly Bill. And then we're going to get him for a whole bunch. Sounds good to me. We also have his Conscripts in hand now, too, which is pretty nasty. So we could evoke it. So we could actually play Trailblazer, play Questing Beast, evoke Fury, kill Bristly Bill. That also gives us three 1-1 one, one tokens. Oh wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where um, I'm about to make a, I'm about to make a major mistake. Hopefully, you all caught that at home. They actually have six mana up, and they can pump the Bristly Bill, and make it a six-six. So we should not do any of that. Um. That being said, I think I still like this Trailblazer Questing Beast play. We can, we can evoke later. So let's go Trailblazer. Questing Beast. Get a, get a token. And then we're going to fire in for a pretty good attack here, I think. So you can always evoke post-combat. Attack with Questing Beast. Wild Nicodle. I don't want to lose the Overseer, but I do kind of want to kill things, so we should jam with all this, I think. Yeah, this is fine. Let's jam like this. I think that with the uh, Conscripts in our hand, we are definitely looking forward to being aggressive, so... This block is lined up great for us. We get to evoke this deal one here and three here. Oh my god, this is awesome. All right, so if they double the counters, it'll be plus two. Yeah, this is awesome. So let's evoke this, pitching the Bloodbraid Elf. We get a creature off of our Savala, because we, we cast a creature spell. Now, we could actually kill our own token here. I go three and one, and then a Johnny kill. Yeah, let's, actually, let's do that. I think we're, yeah, we're, we're really killing it right now. Uh, let's go three here, and then one here. Johnny will flip. We'll activate it. Can I just kill them, actually? I think we're a little short on killing them, but... Exile this. Yep. Can't kill them yet, but... And then we're gonna make a token. And we'll finish with the Fanatic, I think. Could go seven to the face. Put them a three. With the conscripts in our hand, too. They might go off with their uh their henge though and get a bunch of life and go credit crazy, so I think that stopping the mana is probably a good idea. I'll just kill this. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe going face is fine, but I feel like with the conscripts available, uh they're gonna play a big thing. We get to steal it and just probably just kill them, so. Here's a district. Here's a Fanatic. Now, important to note that they will not draw a card of a token. They have an Eternalized Fanatic of Rose with 4 4. They're going to attack for 1. This feels like a concession, uh, but. Yeah, there's a concession. Alright. They didn't even need the conscripts. Uh, sweet. That was awesome. Alright. Hands great. We got three, three perfect lands, uh, a little bit of scry action, removal spell, overseer, flage, and uh, some stuff. We do have a forest to go with our flage, but whatever. You know, hands aren't perfect. They're going to start with an Ocelot Pride. That's pretty good. We don't have an answer to that, but yep. So, uh, we're going to bin this Amara. We can Swords it next turn, I guess. They're going to get one token off of it. We can live with that. In comes the Pride. Gain a life. And Emperor of Bones. Unfortunately, that would exile our Flage. We can just, like, Swords this and Flage this, though. Assuming they don't pump it. They could, uh... If I kill this Pride... I guess we'll wait. I'm sorry, exiles. Never mind. So, uh, yeah. So we'll just go land, and I guess we'll just source this pride now. I guess. So they go. I do. They tap out. We just we just flage their, their flage their 
their emperor. So we don't want the emperor to exile it, obviously. One little kitty cat. They're going to go to combat. Going to exile my swords. Oh, the Amero, sure. Oh, they can actually do the Amero. I forgot I, I forgot I bid the Amero off of this surveil. So if they adapt... Oh, this is bad. All right. Uh, so they get my Amero. They get to draft a card off of it. And now I can no longer flage their Emperor. This is a, a pretty good start for them. All right. Uh, sure. So they're going to get in for seven? Jeez. We're already at 12. Uh, that's bad. So that's gone. We have to have a draw Voice of Resurgence. All right, we're going to Overseer. And seven dwarves to our deck. Say go. We'd like to just draw land, land, land here, I think. Um, you know, Flage, or I guess Voice into Warchief into Worm Coil. Emperor Bones. Yeah, they have Blood Chief Slurs. They can kill it. All right. We're down to seven. We draw Love Struck Beast. I mean, we are just going to cast a, a Love Struck Beast without using the adventure and not draw land. That's tough, you know. Um, we're really at their mercy right now. They have more rule spells. If they don't, we can hold the fort. Help me out. By not having anything, please. Soar, that's that's something. Uh, okay, let me make a vampire, sure. So we can... No, we can't do that. If we had, if we had a mana, we could, we could conscript steal this and make a vampire. That'd be sick, but we just absolutely cannot draw a land. It's impossible, so... Alright, I guess we're going to have to flage and just lose it. We'll just, we'll just kill their vampire. Uh, because we can't just sit here. This, a voice or a power issue is not enough. Our hand's pretty juicy, so we'll just kill this. Be super sad about it. Um, and say, you know, they'll exile the flage. They still can't attack. They draw a card off Sorin. You have a lot of work to do here, folks. I'm not going to lie. What do you got, friends? Draw land. Okay. Land number six. Four cards in hand. Control, alt, delete. <laughs> I get it. It's a computer joke. Hugs. In the tank. Really, uh, you know, the, the six to three land advantage is not so great for us, obviously. I guess we did shuffle in these dwarves to our deck. So now we have, you know, seven more non-lands. They, they can trip, though. So they're just going to cast Knight Errant as a 4-4 four, four and not even convoke it at all. Wow. All right. You say so. That is a very odd play when I have a 5-5 five, five in play, but sure. We draw seven dwarves. Great. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to cast seven dwarves and just try and draw a... Uh, land, I suppose. So, EDB draw a card. Oh, that would help. Please draw a land. We drew a land. We did it. Unfortunately, I have to take damage. Alright, so let's crack the fetch. I can get a forest, or I can take damage off a, off a shock land. I guess we don't. We just get a forest with a paradise druid. Sure. kind of hate it, but here we go. Now I have some mana, at least. That's good for us. Um, I would love to conscript steal their sword and minus it to kill it, but right now we're not in that space. We can't do that in two turns, so they're going to minus this turn. I'll probably plus next turn. Uh, 
If somebody put a counter on this, they can keep going. They can uh, get my stuff, which is kind of cool. The counter does not need to be the adapt counter. It can be uh, any sort of counter. And I'm sure there are many ways in black and white to add counters. Are there any of your deck? I don't know. Really a tank here, jeez. Thinking it through. What do you got, friend? Meet of Massacre, X equals two. All right. I mean, that wasn't ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, that's the end of the world. Uh, all right, that's really good for them. I think we're dead. <laughs> they have to make a token, too. So they use the Meat of Massacre to turn on the Revolt. Yeah. Make a token, and we have no outs, I don't think. All right. Uh, I believe that's it. You can deal with my Dwarves draws. Nah, now we find the land. Uh, I mean... Uh, let's see what we got here. So the, the Massacre kills us too, right? Because we just kill their stuff. Yeah, it's really hard to win a 4 life with a Massacre in play. Definitely need to draw some lands this game. Yeah, really, it's all it comes down to. We just drew some lands earlier on. Probably been all right, but is what it is. They find a solitude. Nothing on right, You got me. That's enough. All right, yeah. Uh, tough game. Is what it is. So there you go. Some absolutely incredibly awesome games. Uh, Cube's great. Love Cube. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, of course, again, like I said, promo code Jim55, set up your order, coolstuffinc.com. Bloomboro is coming, folks, all right? My full set review is already on my uh, my channel. I did my love-hate article here on Cool Stuff last week. Then we got 10 new brews coming up on the 24th all day. I'll be streaming all day for 10 new brews on Early Access. Big thanks to Arena for that. Then my article uh, next Friday will be all of my decks, all the deck lists, all my thoughts on each right here on coolstuffinc.com. And then Bronze to Mythic starts on the 30th. I'll be drafting the new set uh, as I always do from Bronze Mythic. Learn the site with me. It's a lot of fun. Look for an article on that in the future as well. I'm Jim Davis from Magic Player, full-time content creator. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.